It was part of my life. You know, it was the only way I got into town, was go through that bridge. I have a lot of tender memories in there. The bridge is an ex important part of the history of this community. It's a unique thing in, in Minnesota. It is a special family place, definitely. I think it's the history of it all. There's sort of very few covered bridges in the country now. We're fortunate in Minnesota to have one. Zumbroda, a typical small town in southern Minnesota. Like most towns its size, its churches, schools, libraries, and businesses make up its basic features. But this town is anything but ordinary. Not only is Zumbroda the only Zumbroda in the world, it's home to the only remaining covered bridge in Minnesota. Join me, Tom Ursland, as we take a look back at this historic structure and its unique journey. The story begins in 1856, two years before Minnesota enters the Union. Settlers learned that a new road from St. Paul to Dubuque would enter the town of Zambroda, pending construction of a bridge over the Zumbro River. In the spring of the following year, a simple 120-foot bridge made of oak stringers and poplar boards was completed at the north end of Main Street. Ice and water rotted these boards, and heavy loads made the bridge shaky and unreliable. But worst of all, spring ice jams washed away whole sections of the bridge almost every year. In 1869, one of Zambroda's founders, Joseph A. Thatcher, promised a new and better bridge using a plan he had seen in Massachusetts, a covered bridge using Ithiel Town's patented lattice design. They were trying to create a little bit of New England out here in Minnesota, and you can certainly see that in the Congregational Church because it looks like it was picked right up from Massachusetts and moved out here. And the same thing is true of the covered bridge. So I think they knew that those kinds of structures had lasted a long time in the place that they called home up until they came here. And so they were very interested in having things that were not only useful but beautiful, and usually those kinds of things do last. Under the guidance of Evander E.L. Kingsbury, who had experience building churches and schools, a crew began working on the bridge. The idea was that instead of having a bridge supported from underneath, that if you had a structure on the top with a series of triangles, that the triangles would carry the weight so that no, there wouldn't be any undue pressure on any part of the bridge. Two years after the construction started, in 1871, the Zambroda Covered Bridge was completed and a town fixture was born. Some say without the bridge, there might not even be a town at all. The bridge was really important to Zambroda because once Zambroda had a river crossing, then all the farmers who were taking their crops to Red Wing to sell would go through there, and also a stage would go through there. And any town that had daily stage service was a town that was going to grow. The bridge continued to be a serviceable means of getting to and from Zambroda during the transition into the new century. But because of the bridge's cover, winter travel was difficult. Paul Kalis recalls his father, Arnold, telling him stories. Was that he told me, yes, I remember the bridge. When I came to town with a team of horses and a sleigh, and we had a load on the sleigh, the horses had an awful time pulling that load through the bridge because of the lack of snow. You know, it had a cover on it to protect the boards. And that was rather negative. I think he even said the horses even knew it coming up, that they were ready for it. And he said they would just lean into the harness and their feet would slip. And, and uh, you wondered if you're going to get through sometimes. 